Hello and welcome in the IVP series powered by Camelot. Today, another very interesting topic, driver-based planning. Let me drive you through the configuration and the utilization of this feature. And as per usual, let's go in the concept before even going to the system and see some pins and some data. Driver-based planning is kind of a marketing name on the features in IVP, which helps you to manage your risk and opportunity. This is exactly what it is doing. And why did SAP create these options? It's because the business has many kinds of risk and opportunities to manage and because also that willing to tackle each individual type of risk or opportunity into IBP by means of configuration would cost an arm and a leg. So these clever features helps us to simplify the management of risk and opportunities with a very little of configuration and a, a very high level of flexibility. In short, a couple hints about driver-based planning here mentioned as DBP. It enables business users to enter easily volumes and values contributing to global simulation in the supply chain. It allows uh, opportunities to be entered at lower level, aggregated or very aggregated level, like product family, we'll see that in the, de in the demo, product family and customer region by the year, for instance. Okay, It allows you also to create umbrella, what I call named umbrella. This is a name which I would place and attach numbers, like for instance, a promotion in such for such customers and such quantity. No need to create the many plops like we know in IVP. Very easy. And this is only based on a single application and single apps in theory. Very easy. The result being, of course, published published in key figures and whatever other elements of IPP. Let's see how do we use driver-based planning. There is four steps in uh, managing the, the driver-based planning utilization from the end user perspective. The first one is to possibly create an analytics so that when entering the values, you directly see on the screen in theory, the evolution of numbers. It's not a, it's optional, as is mentioned here, it's optional. And I would not recommend to use it because it's a performance killer anyway. Then two, you create driver context. What is that? The, the consultant will have created a number of possible contexts in your systems. And you would use a context to say, for instance, I want to create a opportunities regarding demand, demand plan increase or decrease, okay, according to the family and to the customer region for a certain global, uh, global volumes for a, a certain year. That's what you do when you create the driver context. It's very easy. Just you need uh, some, some explanation. You do that once in a year, for instance. It, it's not something you do every time. Then you create the driver entries, which are the actual opportunities or risk that you want to consider into your planning. This is, uh, this is fairly easy to enter. We'll see that as well. And then, last but not least, you will activate or deactivate uh, such and such opportunities and see the impact on the different key figures you want. For instance, demand planning impact of some opportunities by activating or deactivating the different business opportunities that you would have entered in the system. Because there is many consultants watching this video, let's also mention a little bit of the configuration behind the driver of explaining. Easy. So for each new context of a risk and opportunity you want to model in the system, you will have to create a master data type, which includes the necessary information de depicting the type of risk and opportunity you want to introduce. We'll see that again. Then, as a second step, you have to create the key figures and the formula which will support the, the data entry from this context of risk and opportunity. Fairly easy. And last and definitely not least, you have to adapt your own standard key figure which, which will be affected by the risk and opportunity. And we will see that in the demo so that a consensus demand plan, we will introduce risk and opportunity in this key figure. And therefore, we have to adapt the, key, the, the formula of this particular key figure. Configuring the full set here for a, a certain context, it can vary from, I would say, one day work 
to possibly two, three days. And for each customer, you would implement and, and use uh, driver-based planning. Let's say if you have two, three kind of risk and opportunity context, that's probably the maximum. And it's very often only a single one, which is very often oriented to the demand. Meaning even in SAP IBP1, you have already a, a, an initial proposition. In SAP IBP1, as I just mentioned, there is a capability to run a risk and opportunity scenario based on demand planning, increase, decrease. That's fine. Okay, it's an easy start, but you can also further extend the, the utilization of driver-based planning to other, to other domains like I'm showing you here with inventory, with a production and so on. Why not? Nothing, uh, nothing is uh, impossible. Okay, even capacity increase and so on by mean of the driver-based planning. And by so doing, you would store your data and then out of formula, you impact the standard key figure, running, running heuristics or optimizer, you get output results and you can assess the result of your risk and opportunity input versus even heuristics and optimizer. And if it's not good, then you return and you touch again your driver-based planning information. You can also say, as I mentioned, you can accept or not a, a, a risk and an opportunity into driver-based planning application. Very easy to do. But let's say for today, the, the demo I will show you is only demand-driven. Finally, the demo. Let's get into the system for a couple minutes and see that. And I hope this will help you to activate the driver-based plan, driver planning. Sorry, driver-based planning. We have plenty mouth here uh, into, your, uh, into your own planning area. Driver based planning is a single application in Fiori, as you can see here. Here it is. In this application, you manage on one end the, the activation of a context, and then on the other end, the, end uh, the data entry of each individual opportunity. So let me show you the technical part, so meaning the activation of a context, like here. I have created a context for demand opportunities in 2024. Okay, and to do that, in fact, what I have done, I have created it by a copy or whatever, an edit, and we see here in the background that the link of this particular context with your planning area, with the different descriptions you want to help the user to understand this particular context, the version which is, which is behind uh, this uh, version, the time frame of the, uh, the context, so saying the 2024 here, it's only one bucket for 2024, which I want. I don't want any break uh, in month or whatever quarter. Then here, I'm calling this master data type, which I mentioned, and, and I say out of this master data type, I wish to use the following attributes. I definitely need at least the key attributes, but I can also have further attributes to, to help the user to define the, the different quality of the risk or of, of, an, of an opportunity, for instance. Take note of the include in plan attribute, which will help me activating or deactivating a risk or an opportunity uh, while I'm maintaining the values. So this is the attribute element. Then at which planning level do I want to have my risk and opportunity being maintained by users? Here we see customer region and product family, very high level aggregation, but it could be also very detailed. And also, which key figure which is linked to this risk and opportunity, that's part of the configuration, that I want the user to maintain in this particular application here, a risk and opportunity, a driver based planning. Then you can further filter, not, not necessarily, but you could further filter and say, this risk uh, context or uh, this opportunity context is only for the EMEA uh, customer region, and that's it, or even for such customer and so on. That's your, that's your decision. So that's the technical part of the risk and opportunity. Let me exit that. And the other part is utilizing the, 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 the driver-based planning. For that, you click here and you say, hmm, I'm willing to create a, a, an opportunity of that kind. Okay, let me go. And here the screens appear. And here now, in this particular context, I've already created two opportunities, okay, out of this uh, setup. I have documented it as such here, say meaning that uh, you can enter as a business user the different volumes you want to increase on top of the normal demand plan. And uh, like you say, because I'm French, by the way, let's say uh, the Twix product, I want to increase the, uh, bec uh, because of Auchan promise that they would buy 
a, a certain amount of quantity, okay, which is mentioned here. And in 2024, on top of the demand planning, I have captured that we could possibly do 5,000 more on this family of product. And the same for Carrefour. <coughs> and, and that's fairly easy to enter those opportunities. That's what is important, interesting in, uh, in uh, driver-based planning. Either you do a copy of an existing one, like it is here, and then you create a driver. You have the choice of creating the driver into this list or having a separate pop-up. Let me do that in the, in, the summer, in the summary view. Then I can create a driver from scratch here in this particular context and then go on the left. Yes. Okay, and I say now I'm also to, uh, selling Twix, Twix to Tesco 2024. Okay, so what kind, uh, what, what is the type of risk and opportunity? Something which has been configured by the, by, <coughs> by the, the consultants. It's a demand risk opportunity, risk not to sell Twix, Tesco, because of political, political issue on chocolate. Then do I want to include it in the plan or not? So I can key into multiple uh, opportunities without including them in the plan or say, yes, straightforward, I want that in the plan. Let me not do that uh, yet. So you can add any column you like to document your opportunity. Now, who's concerned by this opportunity? Bah, customer region EMEA. Which family, let's say, <laughs> this Twix is a, is a family IVP 100 here. And from which period to which period? Here, it was a yearly one, so it's pretty stupid because I need to select twice 24. But you could have said uh, monthly or quarterly and then decide which period is exactly that. And I think we will do a minus 8,000. We may do minus 8,000 because I, I qualify it as a risk. Say data. By saving the data, this automatically goes possibly into the into the planning area in the key figures. And let's see that in the details now before I save. Let's see that in Excel. Here, this is an abstract of consensus demand plan and the consensus, the same consensus, plus or minus the risk and opportunities which have been already entered and validated with include in the plan. The consensus is 1,000 and on this product, for instance, and the, the total consensus plus the risk and opportunities is 5,584, 83. Now let's return to this one and say, I've, I saved. So currently what's happening when I save, this is creating many combinations, many plugs in order to activate the very detail of product location customer assigned to this region and to this family. Okay, so this is also a very good hint given by uh, driver based planning to create this mass information in order to register this risk. And if I return, now it's it's done. If I return in, uh, in Excel and show refresh, no change. Why no change? Because my risk is not yet activated. So you see, it's fairly easy. If I go here, edit the, the attributes and now I say, Yes, and I say that one, save data. And I should have now a decrease by going back to Excel. I should have a decrease of this amount because there is two positive uh, opportunities and one risk. So let's see that. 5,053 has now been reduced everywhere by this number. And because of the disaggregation of this key figure, it was designed like this in key figures and, and formula. This is disaggregating the total volumes that I'm maintaining in Fiori apps into the a relevant product of this family. Now, if I would have also a demand plan on this one, just to show you that in fact, there is a logic which is affecting not only a single product, but many others. I can say this one has a 5,000 demand plan and 6,000 uh, 6, demand plan and 5,000 demand plan. And if I simulate now, you will see that in fact, the risk and op has also been affected directly to the existing combination of the group information that I was maintaining in the risk, uh, risk and opportunity. I mean, in this, in this EMEA region, family 100. 
for 24. And by the way, because it's maintained for 24, back to Excel, you see November is not affected, November 23, December 23, neither. But then the quantity starts augmenting or more changing from January, sorry for that, to, to the end of, the, of, of 24. And again, in December 24, there was only one, one competitor's product, but if I have another competitor product with a 2,000, and then another, I don't know, 3,000, then another 1,000, and simulate, you see that the 5,000, the 15,000, and the minus 8,000 now also impact the, the December by this quantity. You see the difference between the normal consensus and the consensus plus risk and open. So really easy to, to use. It's a single application here and a little bit of configuration like I explained. This is it, we are done. The demo and the concept is, uh, is given to you. So I hope you appreciate and it clarifies what you can do with the driver-based planning. Should you have any question, please use the comments. Uh, use the comments in YouTube or in, uh, in LinkedIn. This is my pleasure to answer you, particularly in such a uh, technical topic for the consultant office. And by the way, don't forget, a like or a subscribe I would really appreciate it.